these are the two items I bought at the car boot sale this morning. They need cleaning up, but they're, they're decent quality ones. Anybody that watched Adam's video last night will see uh, he's got a box full of spring calipers and calipers. They're nice ones, very old. Well worth cleaning up, well worth well worth keeping. That's, that's still usable, all this gear's still used. And well, one of the, the first things I made, I made a set of them at school. I think they were called stiff calipers, or stiff joint calipers. I don't know what happened to them. I remember leaving school, I kept them, but I don't know where, where they'll be now. So that was the, the sum total of the car boot sale this morning. But it was nice to get a, a walk around and a bacon sandwich. Watching Adam's video last night and he got his big his big set of carters out. Reminded me of this. The big set square I bought. Um, nobody's actually come on. Or nobody's actually come back saying they've got a bigger one. Uh, so it's... A little bit of a challenge, I suppose. If you've got a bigger set square than that, let's see it. I was taking some drawers up and I've come across this. I think I've showed it before. It's like a comparator gauge. You would set that to whatever diameter you wanted, and you'd use that to check the diameter of a shaft. It's obviously homemade. It's had a lot of use by the wear on it. And that's the modern day equivalent. They both do exactly the same job, well, more or less the same, well, they do the same job. That one there's got a stop on, so you get down in the centre of the shaft. But I'm sure by, by feel you would be able to gauge your shaft very accurately with that. This layer is imperial, so we're cutting the, the 26, 30 inches, no problem at all. We simply move the chain, move the levers on the gearbox. 26, that one lines up with 26. 26 30 inch there. It also tells me that the other lever has got to be in position B, which is that one. And we need a stud gear of 20 teeth. I know it's got a 20 tooth stud gear on because the last thread I cut was imperial. Right, so our tool is dead on centre height, it's set square to the job. Our gearbox is set up to cut 26 threads of the inch. We'll put the lid in the back here. We'll put our gearbox into gear, or we'll lead screw into gear. We'll move the job, the carriage away from the job. You don't, you don't play with it there because if you get things wrong, it'll arrive into the chuck. Move it away from the job, start the lid up. Engage the feed nuts there. See it's going the wrong way. I've only had the lid 10 years. Right, it's engaged there, it's going towards the job, so it's going to cut a right hand thread. This lathe has got a, a thread dead indicator. Being an imperial pitch, I could use that and keep knocking the keep knocking the carriage out of gear and reversing it. But for such a short thread as that, I'll just leave it in gear. Now reverse the lathe. The lathe's fit in the inverter, which makes going forwards and backwards easy. Uh, that's the way I'm going to cut the thread. We'll turn the end it's touching. Zero a zero a cross slide. I measured the thread, and the thread should be 50 thou deep, 25 thou side. So what we'll do, we'll put. Five throw a cut on first, start the lathe up, engage the nuts. And stop the lathe, zero the cross slide, wind it out, and reverse the lathe. Before we cut the threads to full depth, we we'll use our thread gauge, thread pitch gauge, just to verify we're cutting the correct pitch, which is 26. That's dropped in nice, so we're cutting the, the correct thread pitch, 26 threads of the inch.
Hey, that's nice. Nice. A nice thread. So I can disengage what bleed screw now. Very happy with that. That one's shortening and the champagne putting on. That in machining with a slot in and then we're good to go. Screwed on quite nicely. That's it up under the under the shoulder. We we'll just need that parting off. Uh, a slot putting in, and then we're, we're good to go. Before we part it off, we'll lock the rear carriage off. There's no chance of it moving. Like an upside down shot here, we're looking straight looking straight down onto the onto the chuck. I don't normally do shots like this because it makes us feel sickly. Slow things down a bit. I've got a small icon in there so I can grip the, the port we've just made. One thing we use collars is the grip, the grip parallel in the grip over a big area so you can actually grip the thread without damaging it as long as you're half sensible. So we can push this piece in there and just grip the just grip the end of it nicely. All I want to do is machine the little pip off that's been left from parting it off, put a shampoo on, then I can move it across to my miller machine, the miller slot in for a screwdriver, and that's the job done.
there's several ways I can put the, the slot on the edge, the screw out of our slot. I can put it with a hacksaw blade or a file. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on a milling machine. Take that out of there. Get my collet out. We'll move across the milling machine and I've got a fixture that accepts these collets. All I'm going to do is line up the centre of the, the centre of the jaw with me pointer tool. That's actually a little, a little mark where it's been faced, and you can line that up quite easily. Get it within a, a couple of thou being true. That will do. Okay. We'll lock that off. Put a small milling cutter in and cut a slot in. I've got a two mil milling cutter. I'll get a close up of that and we're going to watch it break together. We've got my two mil milling cutter in. I've got the machine running as fast as it'll go, which is two and a half thousand. Very, very gently. Cut us left to play in that day. That's what we finished job, just a little bit deburring. We'll screw it in, give it a try. What I'll probably do, I'll probably lock tight it into the centre because it's only got to come out and you've got to maintain the bearings and a little bit of heat will release the Loctite. I screw it in with a little drop of Loctite on. We'll give it a try and see if it ejects out of the tail stock now. In like that. And it pushes it out, that's just what we wanted. Back the way it was before I lost the before I lost the part. The annoying thing is I actually found it and I didn't know what it was. And I put it away somewhere safe, and it's that safe I can't find the bastard. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's video. Um, I certainly enjoyed making them. Even at this sad time, I still get a lot of pleasure from messing about the shop and doing videos. Uh, I'll continue doing them as long as you continue liking them. I'd like to thank you once again for all the kind words and all the kind messages regarding your wife that you gave last week. It really does mean a lot. Anyway, thanks once again for subscribing, thanks for watching, and thanks for clicking the like button. Thanks.